death investigation. I'm just trying trying to get, I guess, any type of insight that that you might have. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot there. Um, uh, about about maybe a year or two ago, Lori started reading some books and near death experience books and. Um, started um, saying some weird things. Yeah, I don't know if you know a lot about the LDS religion, but um, we're LDS, okay. and uh, okay. and so she started, uh, I think, listening to podcasts and some, some people who were LDS and now have been excommunicated from our church. Okay. Um, and so she started following them, and... and and then she started um, saying some really weird things. And my son uh, moved there and was living with her and Charles. Okay. And he heard some of the same weird things that I did. And so um, some of those things were that um, uh, she, you know, talks to Jesus in the temple and she's married to Moroni and she's not married to Charles anymore and that um, – she has a higher priesthood than the rest of us, and just some things that, that were alarming to me. And because I told her that I thought those were alarming, and, and, thought, and she goes, you think I'm crazy, don't you? And I was like, I don't know if you're crazy, but none of that makes any sense to me. And after I told her that, she, she cut me off, and, and, and me and her were closer than anybody in the family. Okay. And, she just stopped, okay. and she just stopped talking to me altogether. I haven't talked to her in over a year and a half. Okay. And, okay. and then she cut off some of my family from communication as well when they thought that she was saying some, some things. And, and she just, you know, went off into some other tangent. And so she's with another group that this is called Preparing for the End or something like that. But... The things that caught me that were, were shocking was her telling um, Charles that Charles is dead, and she knows that there was another guy named Ned that was living in Charles's body, and he was an inch shorter, and that Charles couldn't fool her anymore because he was an inch shorter. It was really alarming to me that she said Charles was dead and that some guy named Ned was living in, his, in her body. She talks about um, people having dark spirits that she can see, and she can she knows who has dark spirits and when there's dark spirits around, and just a lot of crazy stuff. And so when I told my family, I was like, "Look, I'm really concerned about Lori. I think you know she needs to go to a psychiatrist or something needs to be happened." And my mom and dad had told me they said, "Well, she's she's disconnected from reality uh, because that's the only reality that she feels she can live in, and she's not hurting anybody." And when they told me that, I was like, okay, well, maybe I just, I'll just stay away. Uh, I won't try to confront her because Charles, for about a year, or after they got divorced or were going to get divorced, called me and said, I'm telling you, your sister has gone off the deep end. And I said, what? So he told me all the things that, that she had told him. And he, he would just call me sobbing, crying, because he didn't have the same wife anymore, didn't have the same Lori. And... My whole family cut him off because Lori told them, do not talk to Charles. Okay. And I was the only one that took Charles' phone calls, and I live in Kansas. Gotcha. And I felt bad for Charles. And so I, I said, Charles, I'll, I'll do what I can to help, but Lori won't talk to me because she thinks I think she's crazy. So um, anyways, through all this, Charles said, well, something has to be done because um, she thinks that she talked to Melanie, who's our niece. Uh, and she's part of this group now where they go and they're preparing for the end of the world or something. And uh, so she's got her on this. And then she said that her husband was gay, that she went to the, the temple and prayed about it, that he's gay. And Brandon is not gay. So uh, Melanie left Brandon and just divorced him. And Lori said, oh, yeah, I prayed about it. He's gay. So Brandon was upset that Lori's interfering with their lives. So Charles would tell me Lori is ruining people's lives yeah. by just you know, saying stupid, crazy things. And so he goes, something's got to be done. So he wanted me to fly out there and meet with the state president, because I know this her, their state president in our church. And I said, all right, I'll, I'll go out there and meet. And he says, I'll just put you on my miles and I'll fly you out there, but don't tell Lori or tell your family that I'm flying you out there, or Lori will run. She won't talk to you. And I was like, okay. So I flew out to Arizona, and I stayed with my mom and dad, and I told them that I got the airline tickets from my wife, Nicole, that she put it on her points, right? Uh -huh. 
So while I'm there in Arizona, I'm at my mom and dad's house, and Charles was supposed to go pick up JJ on Thursday morning. Well, he texts me like it's 7.30 in the morning, and he said, Alex is here. And back up a little bit, on Tuesday, I called Alex, and I said, hey, because me and Charles, Charles it was getting my ticket. I said, hey, I'm coming to uh, Arizona. We, Him and I used to spend time together, and he comes out here. He's a truck driver, and he's also – sucked into Lori's uh, whatever she tells him he, he believes. And so he's listening to all these podcasts, and he, he's fallen into whatever she says. He just He's all about it. And so I said, look, I'd like to spend some time with you. How about if I spend the night at your house instead of mom and dad's house? He said, yeah, I'll go, go, out, I'll go buy a mattress, and uh, a blow-up mattress. So he can stay in, one of the room, in my room, uh, in one of his bedrooms. And I said, oh, that'd be great. So I get in on Wednesday. And I called Alex, and he never answers the phone or, or returns any of my calls. And I thought, that's really weird. So I spent the night at my mom and dad's that night, and I asked him, I said, well, what are you doing home? And he goes, he goes, I took this week off. I said, well, wh- why did you take the week off? He goes, I don't know, I'm just working around the house. And usually when my brother takes a week off of vacation, he goes to Columbia to be with women. Okay. So I thought it was very strange that he took a whole week off just to hang out at his house. I said, that doesn't make any sense. So when Charles texts me, Alex is here, I said, that sounds weird. Why is he at Lori's house? I said, be on the lookout or something. They could be up to something. And Charles texts me back, absolutely. So next thing I know, um, Charles would, would call me and text me all the time like during the week, and I was the only one that would talk to him, and I felt, you know, he would just, he just was distraught over this whole thing with Lori. So um, Thursday, after he texted all that, um, I drove my mom and dad uh, to the temple and dropped him off in the car, and I went and got my son, and we hang out, and I didn't hear from him all day Thursday. And I thought, well, that's really weird. So I called, I think, I either texted him or called him, and he didn't answer. And then on Friday, um, same thing. I called him, texted him, or, or, and I said, it's just so weird that I've heard from Charles. I wonder what's wrong with Charles. And where is he? What's he doing? I haven't heard from him. And that whole day went by. Well, Saturday, me and my son went to Tucson to be uh, hang out with my friend Eric. So as we drove to Tucson, I thought, I have a really bad feeling in my stomach. Like, what, what would happen if, if, you know, Charles went in, and I literally told this to my son, and then when I got to Tucson, I told this to my friend. I said, what if Alex and Lori did something to Charles? And Because he doesn't have his phone, and he's always on his phone. And I just said, I have a sick feeling. So when I went to Tucson, I told my friend Eric, I was like, I don't know, there's something really weird going on, because I told him the whole situation, and Charles had not called. And I said, this is really weird. And so Eric, on a whim... Google's Charles' name. He goes, well, what's his name? I said, Charles Vallow. And he says, it says here that he got shot and killed by his brother-in-law in, in, in uh, Chandler. I said, what? And I read the article. And I broke down and started crying because I said, I felt like something was wrong. And Eric was like, oh, my. I, I mean, we were literally in shock. Nobody called me. Not my mom and dad. Not my brother. Not my sister. My sister Summer was in New York at the time, so and my son Zach was watching my sister Summer's dog. We were in charge of, of her house. So I drove home, and I, I was talking to my mom and dad when I was driving home. I was like, we got to talk, and she, my mom got all mad at me. She goes, we sure do. And so uh, when I got to my mom and dad's house, Tylee was there, and Tylee was standing at the edge of the, of the counter, and she was quiet, and Tylee's always hugging me and saying hi to me. She looked like she did not want to say a word to me and was just talking to my mom. And me and Zach, my son, came in and sat down, and they had a conversation between the two of them without me being able to hear what they were saying. And then my mom, yeah, no, um, Tylee and my mom. Okay, okay. And so Tylee and my mom then, uh, my mom walked Tylee to her, to the end of the hallway and Tylee left, got in her Jeep and left. And my mom came in and she goes, how dare you not you know, say anything to her after what she's been through? 
And I and then I snapped and I screamed. And I said, Charles is dead, and nobody in the family has said a word about it. And it's been three days. And then my mom snapped on me and said, get your stuff and get out. And so um, I... My mom and me and my mom and my dad have a great relationship. We have never fought. We've never cursed at each other. We've never had any problems. That for like 30 minutes in their house, we screamed at each other. It just all came out. I was so mad that nobody told me that Alex shot Charles and what happened. And nobody told me anything about what happened. And so when, when that went down, me and Zach got our stuff and we went over to Summer's house and I called Summer and I was like, I told Summer what happened. I said, you don't know that Charles is dead? And she goes, no, but I knew that she did because the way that she reacted. So my mom told me on, on Friday when I was at their house, she said, I know that you, you and Charles were texting and emailing. I saw every text and every email that you were trying to get Lori in trouble at the church. And that shocked me because I said, well, how could you have, if Charles got shot and the phone is there and the police got the phone, how did you have time to go through every text and every email that me and Charles had? Which makes me believe that in my my opinion, my theory is that Lori and Alex got together and Lori convinced Alex that Charles is not Charles anymore, that he is this guy named Ned, and that they shot him. I don't even think there was a fight or anything. I just think that because Charles texted me at 733 and went into the house. And then from what I read on the reports or whatever, it says that the police were called at, at 8 or something about him getting shot. And I thought, why would Alex be at Lori's anyways? And why would he have a gun in the house? And why wouldn't he call 911? Charles is not going to hurt anybody. He's not going to go crazy on anybody. And Alex is an expert shooter. He's got tons of guns. He goes shooting all the time. He knows how to kill somebody. And he shot two shots to his chest to make sure he wasn't dead. And then, or to make sure he was dead. And this was my theory. Yeah. And then try to cover it up by trying to do mouth to mouth. Who does mouth to mouth after someone tries to kill you and then you shoot them? I mean, there's so many things that don't, there's so many red flags that, and I don't know if you can, there's proof of anything, but did Alex get hit with a baseball bat? He had an injury to the back of his head. Now he he alleges it was it was from the baseball bat. You know I I can't prove one way or another right now whether or not it was, but but he alleges that that um, Charles hit him in the back of the head with the baseball bat. And so did he get a concussion or did he go to the hospital? There stitches? There there was a cut to the back of the head. He did not go to the hospital. Um, so we we brought him back here and interviewed him, <laughs> and then. Um, you know, not having any reason at least at the time to hold him, uh, released him from there. Uh, the yeah. reason that they they were, I'm positive they were able to see all of your texts and emails is because Lori had Charles's phone and we had to get it back from her. Shoot a couple hours after she was released, so she had time to to go through his phone. But my mom knew about this on Friday. Yeah. But they had, yeah. so they had Charles's phone when she left. Basically, she left her house um, and then it came back. She dropped JJ off at school sometime around this incident. Uh, she she says right after the incident happened, she was in a van of panic and left and took JJ to school and then came back. We brought her down and interviewed her, Tylee and Alex, and then released them from here. And then as we were, were processing the scene, we're like, well, where's Charles's phone? So we called Lori, and she was like, oh, I, I have it, and brought it back to us a couple hours later. So she had his phone on Thursday right after the incident for, you know, four hours. Just to let you, just to let you know, Charles never leaves his phone anywhere. He always has it with him. Yeah. So for her to say that he left it there and she got his phone, that did not happen. Yeah. 
That did not happen. Charles has his phone on him all the time. So, which then believes that they had planned something and Charles walked in. So, dude, how is Kylie? What, what did she? I don't even know what happened. Like, none of my family has talked to me because supposedly I was on Charles' side to try to get Lori help. My whole family has not told me one thing about this incident. So what what the report was is that Al basically stayed the night there the night before and was planning on, they were planning on going and doing something for the day, him, Lori, and Tylee, um, that Charles came and got J.J. and basically got into a screaming match and was yelling and screaming at Lori. Um, and then they, they say that Tylee basically brought a baseball bat out from her room and was kind of standing next to Lori. Um, and, you know, had it kind of holding it in defense of Lori as, as Charles was yelling at her. They say that Charles yanked the baseball bat out of her hand, that Alex got in, involved and basically intervened during that altercation. Alex got hit with the bat. He went back to his room, got the gun, and then um, came back and, and basically challenged Charles. Charles came after him with the bat again, and that's when he shot and killed him. That just is like, and so did Tylee see the whole thing? They say that she was, so they said that she was just outside of the house at the time the shooting happened, is where, where she puts herself. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. None. Zero. That is like, and this is my brother and sister, and I love them with all my heart, but I'm telling you, there's something wrong about Lori and Alex and this this belief that they have. And, you know, Lori thinks that death is it, nothing. And it's odd that Joe, her ex-husband, supposedly died of a heart attack when they were desperate for money. And he left her 50000 and Tyler gets 2000 And then Charles has a $2 million. It's just there's a lot of red flags for me. And that story does not make sense. Charles does not leave his phone anywhere. Yeah. So which which makes me believe that. He, is there cameras on, at the houses around there that could see the street or anything? You know, I found one ring doorbell, but I think the fence was outside of it. So I wouldn't have been able to find a single camera in the neighborhood that would that would help me walk through a timeline of any of this. Yeah. So. I have the same, I have the same, uh, just the what if, what if they, they brought him there to set him up type thing, and I, I just don't, yeah. know, you know, it's a matter of, of making our way through it, so. Yeah, it just, to me, it's just, I, I, I don't, you know, you don't have to shoot and kill Charles. You call 911, you know, he's not going to, they just, it's just, all of it sounds way too crazy to me. Yeah. And, and, and set up and staged. Al he lives so close to them, he doesn't have to spend the night at Lori's house. He could drive over there, and they can go somewhere during the day. That is, a, that that's a, that's definitely a lie. Yeah. And just, I don't know how you can prove it or what the proof can be. You know, that's the whole problem is I'm sure they plan. I don't know if you can, if, if they've ever emailed each other or text each other or they just plan this out by just talking. I don't know, but there's there's got to be somewhere where they've talked this through because Lori and Alex planned Joe's death, and Joe, Lori found out that Joe molested her kid supposedly, and Alex got upset, and Al said I'll 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 take care of him, and then they planned out how they were going to kill Joe, and she, and Al was going to taser him, throw him in the trunk, and take him out to a field and shoot him, and then bury him. Well, Al went to taser him, and it didn't work, and Joe called the cops, and Al went to jail for 12 months. Yeah. So there's something, there's something with Lori and Alex that they're, they're, neither one of them are – well, Alex is excommunicated from the church, and so he believes Lori because Lori's like, it doesn't matter what you do in this world. All you have to do is have a body, and you can be saved. You're, you're just here to get a body. And Al loves that because then he can go sin and do whatever he wants. So he loves to hear what Lori has to tell him. And so I'm, I'm just telling you uh, man to man, and, and I love my family, but justice, you know, poor Charles, he didn't deserve to die yeah. at all. He's a, he was so upset about the way Lori was doing that. And so 
the way that she the way that she changed and the things that she said and the odd behavior and just I was the only one that would sit and listen to him cry and be upset about it and and my and everybody listened to Lori and my family and just they shut him off he couldn't talk to anybody and he paid for everybody in the family he paid for everybody's phone he bought cars I mean even my mom and dad and it's just odd that my mom sent my wife an e a text on Friday. She didn't tell us that Charles was dead. She didn't tell us anything was happening. She knew that I flew out there on Charles's points, and she sent a message to my wife going, thank you so much for sending Adam out here using your, your points to fly out. Why would she say that? Right. I think my mom knows something, and she's trying to cover up for those two. And Tylee definitely has to know something. You know, and it doesn't make any sense that JJ's in the car when this whole thing happened. And after you shoot somebody, you get in the car and you drive to take him to school. Yeah. Well, and, and you probably you probably know all this. I, I, I share them with you. Yeah. I share them with you. So. Um, and I don't know if you've seen the, the emails that Charles said, but he talks about all the crazy things that Lori has said. You know, yeah, to him. Yeah, he got a copy of an order of protection petition that he got that, that outlined some of those allegations. Um, yeah, and my, and our, it, yeah, and he went to our state president, and you know, and you know, there's there's just there's a lot of stuff. And then I guess they had ten thousand dollars in cash somewhere uh, for an emergency, and Lori took seventy one hundred out and tried to blame Charles, and said that he took it. And I don't know. I just I just feel like. They're trying to get Charles's, and I don't know, Charles tried to get a divorce from Lori, and she disappeared for 58 days. Nobody knew where she was. Not her family. She didn't tell anybody in her family. She didn't tell anybody because she, she didn't want Charles to actually divorce her. And I think it's because she wanted to keep that policy alive. Yeah. And so that just, all the behavior is so strange that nobody in the family, not even her daughter, knew where she was, and she was in Hawaii apparently this whole time. Yeah, and Tylee was staying with Alex at the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. So those three are thicker than thieves, but I bet you Tylee could break if you got to her. I don't know how, what she would say, or, but, gosh, it's just, there's just, there's something that's really wrong about that. Yeah, I, I, like I said, we have, I have a lot of concerns, and it's been going through, like, I have Charles' phone now, so I've been going through the phones, because he said that he was going to record his interaction with her. Um, but yeah. there isn't a recording, so I, you know, I don't know if they deleted it or um, or if he didn't actually run the recorder. I, I I don't know. Is there a way to get Is there a way to get deleted messages or deleted things or no? Able to restore some of them, but um, yeah, his his phone, like you said, he was on it all the time. His phone's eighty gigabytes worth of data. Oh yeah. So I mean, there's there's just so much in there that it's it's mind numbing to sit and try to go through it and. Yeah, and I, I was gonna. I actually was met with one of our computer forensic guys on Friday, and then ended up getting getting called away for something different. But me yeah. trying to see if to see if he could find like something that I might be missing in the download of the phone and stuff. So yeah, well, I know that that was the thing because people weren't believing him. And Lori said that Lori said that he had an affair, and and so some girl called him, and I said. You know, I want to believe Lori, and I said, "Well, let." Me, and this, I didn't get to talk to her, but this is what she told my mom. And I was like, "Well, I would like to see the receipt that supposedly he had, you know, sex with prostitutes." And I also would like to to hear from the girl that called you, that t called Lori. And my mom was like, "Well, that's not none of your business." I said, "Yeah, but if you want me to believe that Charles had an affair, because Charles cried to me and swore to me that he didn't, and I believe him." And, and maybe he's lying. I don't know. But the way that Lori has been telling fibs and crazy things out of her mouth, I don't believe one thing that comes out of her mouth. Yeah. Huh. So, yeah. I mean, there's. There, I mean, that's that's a situation. And so, I mean, I literally lost my family over this. You know, my mom and dad will not talk to me. They told me to get out of their house. Me and my son both. But we were like the most loved in our family. By everybody. 
and because I have logic, you know, normal logic, you know, you you want to be on your family side, but when right is right, right's right, and wrong is wrong. Yeah. And for them to believe that, oh, Al's a hero. He saved highly. Charles would never hurt anybody like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, looking, I think, looking into it, it doesn't seem like Charles has ever had any type of violent past whatsoever. No, none. It's To me, Lori and Alex planned this out. They knew Charles was coming to get J.J. Somehow, Kylie was in her room or somewhere or outside or whatever. They, I mean, they shot him. They killed him. And I don't know if it was for money or if they thought he was that evil spirit named Ned and Lori can't deny any of that. She said that to a lot of people. Yeah. And so, I mean, I don't know. You know, that's that's what I know, and that's you know, I know there's a lot of red flags, and I know in court you probably can't prove things on red flags, but there's got to be something about that baseball bat. I even think that Lori hit Alex with the baseball bat after they killed Charles. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That possibility is definitely there. I mean, Charles, is, even for his age, was in, in uh, great shape, and you know, yeah. you could tell it wasn't. It, it didn't appear to be that type of injury of, of a grown man swinging a bat. Like I said, when when they got back to drop off the bone, Al didn't even Al hadn't even gone to the hospital. He had some medical tape basically around the, the, the cut on the back of his head. And that's that. So yeah, yeah. There's there's just there's a lot. I just want to make sure that you got. My side, my wife's side, because she also, um, it just, all, all, my friend Eric that knows everybody that lives in Tucson, his, everybody's gut feeling is that, you know, this, this was not, um, this was not self protection from Al. Yeah. He shouldn't have spent the night. He shouldn't have taken that week off of work. I mean, it, it, when you think about it, it was literally planned out for this whole thing to happen. In, in my opinion, yeah. No, I like I said, I, I yeah, I have the the same concern. So we're we're still actively investigating it and, and okay. going going through it all. And do you yeah. you heard? I guess you haven't really talked to your mom and them. I don't know if if Lori is is you know had us moved from that house. If she's staying at Al's house. If she's even still in the Phoenix area. I don't have any idea where she is right now. From what I heard from my mom, who talks to my uncle and aunt that she's changed her story three times. And my uncle, my my two uncles both say they know that's not the right story. Gotcha. And so my mom, um, and she was so distraught when I got back. Like, because I said, I literally yelled, I said, Alex and Lori murdered Charles. And she looked at me and her eyes got all big. Like I said something that, you know, well, but that could be anything, you know, but still... I just, I couldn't believe it. And so the family, the the cousins and the uncles and everybody, they understand the history with Lori and Alex and Lori's ex-husbands. Yeah. And so there's a, there's a whole pattern of things there. Um, so nobody, nobody in my family believes what's happened. And I think even my mom, my dad didn't even know. My mom didn't tell my dad. Apparently Lori had a, a family meeting at her house on Saturday and told my mom and dad, or told my dad, because my mom already knew on Friday. Huh. And so then my dad found out about it, and then my sister Summer is like, yeah, Al's a hero, because he, the story that Al and Lori tell the family is one thing, but I'm sure that they got that phone immediately and started, you know, going through his phone after they shot and killed him. He didn't leave his phone. Yeah. So... And the timeline is 7.30. I think the last text I got from him, it was right around 7.30 in the morning. And then I think the phone, the, from what I read on the p newspaper, was like at 8 o'clock or somewhere after 8. Yeah. He got, he was caught. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure, but that's, that's what I know. Yeah. Huh. Well, let me... I have your, I have all your information, and yeah. we're trying to figure out the best way. Do you think Al would ever take a call from you? No. He's going to just, just avoid you. 
Yeah, my whole family will avoid me. Nobody will talk to me because there's an investigation going on, and so they don't want to say a word to me. I guarantee that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I would just be curious to see what Al's side of the story is to a third, you know what I mean, to a... To, a, uh, to another party? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering. I'm, I mean, for none of them to tell me anything that happened, like I just heard it from you for the first time because Kay had told me a little bit about what, what was said because uh, I talked to Charles' sister, Kay, uh -huh. uh, and I feel bad for her, too. Yeah, because she's um, JJ's grandma, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and she told me that. Um, so I think my Uncle Rex said that Al – after that happened, went to Columbia, or my mom told somebody that Al went to Columbia, and then he came back. Because then Brandon, my, the one that Melanie is divorcing, said that Al was at Melanie's house on Saturday putting her fans in, ceiling fans in. Okay. He goes, Al, he goes, Al's out in Columbia. He's there. So maybe he went for a couple days, or maybe he didn't go at all. And then my uncle said that my mom said um, that – uh, Kay wanted to go fly JJ down for Charles's funeral, and nobody in my. The weird thing about it is that when I was at my house on on Saturday morning, and me and my mom and dad had a sit down, and it was a yelling match, and then it got calm, and we tried to talk through things, and then it got to be yelling again. Why we were sitting there, not one time did my mom or dad say anything about how terrible it is or sorry that Charles was shot. They were all like, what a piece of crap trying to hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, to me, that's a, that's another red flag that nobody, like my sister, nobody wants to go to the funeral. I was, I had planned a vacation in Los Angeles with my son. So we were in there when we told Kay that she said she was having a thing for Charles. But then when Kay called Lori, Lori's like, no, um, we're busy. We're getting ready to move to Hawaii. So I don't, we don't have time to have JJ go down there and back. And then, so that was that was something that Kay had told uh, my wife Nicole, and so she didn't let JJ go to her own. Lori didn't let JJ go to to uh, Charles's funeral in Louisiana. Yeah. And then my mom said, uh, or or told uh, Lori or Kay, I can't remember where it was, but um, that. They were going to move to Hawaii, but then now Lori has a job at the, at a gym, and she's working at a gym. So, I mean, I've heard a lot of different things. So I, I literally am in the dark because nobody they, – they, they cut me and my son off from all social media. Got and it. my son is their favorite. Everybody is the greatest kid in the world. And he is distraught because he moved to Phoenix and worked there for Brandon and would stay at my mom and dad's house and be at Summer's house and Melanie's house. And for him, for them to cut him off because Charles reached out to him and he felt sorry for Charles like I did. Yeah. And so be, just because we had conversations with Charles, they cut us off. That, I mean, none of that makes any sense to me. So are your parents actively still involved in the LDS church? Yes. Okay, so they're, they, they have a bit off on the, the, the crazy nonsense or, or whatever no. you want to call it that Lori's kind of got going on. They're called, they're called pre pe prepared People Prepared. Lori's on a podcast. It's called Preparing the People. And ever since Lori's been on this two-year deal of, of reading these books and being part of these podcasts, the people who are doing the podcast have been excommunicated from the church. Gotcha. And Alex said, the guy who got excommunicated from the church, he said, I've heard more light and truth out of his podcast in the last, you know, two weeks than I have the whole time I grew up going to, the, going to church. So they are, they're bought hook, line, and sinker into this thing. But for Lori to say that she goes to the temple and talks to Jesus Christ and that she's on a special mission here to gather 144,000 people and that she's married to Moroni and that she has to do whatever it is to, to make sure her mission gets um, completed, which could mean killing Charles or anybody that's getting in her way of her mission. There, I mean, there's a lot of, of just, and it's, it's literally nonsense. And Lori is one that loves attention. 
and and I get it because I love attention too. I'm on the radio, but she gets she wants attention to a point like if you did see Jesus Christ in the temple, you wouldn't tell anybody. And she goes around and tells everybody because she wants that attention yeah. that she's better than everybody else. That Jesus Christ gave her a higher priesthood than the rest of us, and like she gave highly blessings. You're not allowed to get blessings in our church unless you hold the priesthood. And so she and she's given Tylee a bunch of blessings. And so she's doing and she she's supposed to and you're you're supposed to follow the prophet and she's not. And my mom and dad are like, Well, the, she's doing you know, she's not doing anything wrong and it's just it's just too much for me to, to and I was only going there to see if I could actually have a conversation with her after a year and a half and she wouldn't do it. Yeah. She wants, and so there was nothing I can do. I was going to go talk to the state president, but he wasn't there when I was going to go play basketball. I never went to play basketball, so um, and, and I was going to record. And then I thought, you know what? I don't have to record. I just want to hear it with my own ears. So my mom and dad are very upset that I said I was going to record her and record them, and they think I'm a traitor and all this other stuff. And I'm only, I was only doing it to help Lori. I still want to help her. She's my sister. I think she needs mental help. Yeah. So this, this uh, and I figured it was, but this, uh, all this preparing of people and all this other stuff is, is just is way outside of the LDS faith. <laughs> yeah. It seems almost cult-like. I mean, it's just bizarre. Yeah. The, the, the it's, it's very... Stuff. Yes, there's a lot of bizarre behavior, the things that they say. Uh, they try to mix it in so it doesn't seem like it's that crazy, but it is. So which, which stake were they at? Which, which church were they going to? They were going to, um, let's see, they lived in, um, they lived up, where's that real, uh, off of Riggs Road. Okay. So... I, I, it's the, it, the the stake center is on Riggs Road. Okay. And the stake the stake president's name is um, um, President Holmes. Okay. And he has interviewed Charles and Lori. And Lori, I think, lied to him to keep her temple recommend. Charles wanted her temple recommend to be taken away because if her temple recommend gets taken away then he thinks that she would snap out of whatever she's in. Gotcha. And that was it. And so that was the reasoning that I agreed to do anything with Charles was to let's see what we can do. Because Lori thinks that she's, you can shoot her, nothing will happen. She told me she doesn't have to eat anymore because she's a translated being. If she didn't want to eat, she didn't have to. And if somebody tried to shoot her, it wouldn't, the bullet wouldn't go through her. She actually said those words to me. And to my son. Huh. So, so I know that, you know, there, that's not, there's, there's, I don't know what the word, I don't know what crazy or delusional or whatever it is, but if you're living like that, as my mom and dad said, she's not hurting anybody, they said that on Thursday before we knew Charles was dead. Yeah, she hurt somebody, all right. So has her temple met, uh, recommend been taken away? No. Okay. So she went back, so Charles told the president and all that. So then she he, she had to go in with the interview with the president, and the president asked her the questions that you're supposed to do to get a temple recommend, and she lied because she says, oh, I follow the prophet. I do what he says. The prophet doesn't give you permission to give um, blessings to your kids unless you have the priesthood. Yeah. You, and so – and she's she's bragging that I was gave Tylee a blessing one time in the room. She goes, and Al was in there too. This was way before this when this really started happening. When I went down and visited them, and I realized there's something wrong with Lori. She goes, come in here, let's have give Tylee a blessing. And then Al, who's excommunicated, she's like, it doesn't matter. He has a priesthood. They they don't know what they're talking about, and he could put his hands on her. And if I want to give her a blessing, she'd be healed even faster because my priesthood is higher than all of yours. And, like, that's the kind of talk that I said, Lori, there's something wrong here. And then after that day, she never talked to me again. Okay. So if you don't believe what she's saying, she gets rid of you. I guess she's got another friend named Melanie that buys into everything she's saying, too. So they're, they're two peas in a pod as well, apparently. I've never met her before, but that's what I heard. Who was Brandon, Brandon married to? 
<laughs> he was married to my niece, Melanie, but Lori also has another There's friend. Two Melanie's Melanie. then? Yes, two Melanie's, yep. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Because I've heard the name so, Mel, but I wasn't sure. What's your niece Melanie's last name? Um, Boudreaux. Okay. Yeah, that's Brandon's uh, wife. Okay. And then there is another Melanie. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so that's where the two Melanie's are. But, you know, for Lori to, to have that, you know, to say that you, you, you could shoot her and a bullet wouldn't hurt or she never has to eat again, I mean, that's alarming. And I told that to my mom and dad. And they're like, oh, that's, that's the, that's she's, my mom and dad admitted to me, she's detached from reality, so she's living in a world that she can actually live in. And so I said, well, there's something wrong with that. They, someone needs to, she needs to go to therapy or something. She goes, you think Lori's going to go to therapy? And so I think with the church is that she went in and got her temple recommend because she asked, she answered the questions right about whatever she was supposed to answer to the, so she got her temple recommend, and so she goes to the temple all the time. Gotcha. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, um, you, you have my direct number. Yeah. I, I will be in touch with you. We are. I'm still actively working on this. Okay. Um, but if there's anything that I could think of that it, that that I need to you know try to find out, I'll definitely reach out to you. I have not reached out to your your parents and everything else because I'm not sure what the family dynamic you know was and is. Yeah. I knew you had uh, from the message. Yeah. I knew you'd been talking to Charles that day. Um, yeah. You see the, you, the text message back and forth and the. Um, uh, on his phone and him saying Al yeah. was there and stuff. Did you call Al? Because um, you had sent him a text saying, hey, I'm going to call Al right now and press him to come get me. Did you call yeah. Al? No. Okay. Okay, I wasn't sure. Cause he oh, wait. Maybe maybe I did call. I think I did call him, but he never answered. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And I was just doing that to be able to get Al away from Lori so then we could actually talk to Lori because, you know, and I, the, and also to pressure Al, I wanted to ask Al what Lori's been saying because Al's, Al's told me things that Lori says because they're too th they're thicker than thieves too, and so since Lori doesn't talk to me, I wanted to find out what Lori has been saying lately because I know what she said when I was there. Yeah. And so, but Al, but then Al shut me off. I think Lori said, "Do not talk to Adam." Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a difficult situation all the way around on this one, huh? Yeah, it's it's literally like something out of a, out of like one of those you know twenty twenties. Right. Yeah. Well, Adam, I really, I really appreciate you calling me. And sure. Yeah. Let me know if I can help any other way. Give me a call. I was I was be being able to help any way I can. Definitely, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk soon. I'm sure. All right. Thank, All right, thank, thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.